One of my mentees is working on her tech packs to send to manufacturers for costing and production. And we were just talking about how to do the spec sheet. Luckily for her, her patterns were brought into Clothe 3D. So she's planning to use the POM tool to get her spec measurements and design measurements. Genius. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I talk about digital fashion design software and communication on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. For as much as we talk about the really cool 3D visualization things that Clo can do, there are also lots of tools in both Clo 3D and Browseware that can help you with the production of your garments. Now, I've got quite a few videos on creating tech packs and a free tech pack template in case you need one. Link in the description. So if you don't know by now, you should know that a tech pack is a pretty essential document. And one of the pages that need to be completed in your tech pack is a spec sheet. If you're not sure what that is, that's the page that gives all of the measurements for your garment. POM stands for points of measurement. And those are the descriptions that are written on the spec sheet that indicate what should be measured for that particular type of garment. So if you've ever heard phrases like across shoulder, neck drop, sweep, body length, these are all points of measurement. And in Clo, you have the POM tool that makes it very simple for you to create those specs directly from the 2D pattern. So let me show you how to do that. After you open your project, you can navigate to the lower right corner and change the view so you can only see the 2D window. You're going to be creating the POMs using the 2D pattern, so you won't really need the 3D window open. The POM tool is near the bottom of the 2D tools panel and right above it is the edit POM tool. To use it, click the point where you wanna start the measurement, then double click the point where the measurement should end. A straight yellow line will appear and in the object browser, you'll be able to double click the description box to label the POM. Keep in mind that you can only create measurements for lines that are on or attached to the pattern. So for something like the front neck drop where you need to measure from the high point shoulder straight down to the neck seam edge, normally I would measure from the center of the garment to the neck edge. But since there's no pattern at center front at the high point shoulder, you can't measure straight down. So here's what you have to do. Switch to the edit pattern tool and right mouse click on the point at center front on the neckline. From the menu, choose add perpendicular line and the line will be on the Y axis. This will create a perpendicular internal line on the pattern. I happen to be measuring the left side, so I'm going to choose both so it extends across the entire pattern. Although since the pattern is symmetrical, I could just measure the opposite side. And now I can measure the front neck drop from the high point shoulder down to the perpendicular line I just created and then relabel the POM. Repeat the same steps to get the back neck drop. I don't usually add a shoulder slope for a t-shirt, but if you do need one, you'd want to use the same method and add perpendicular line to the high point shoulder and the point at the end of the shoulder seam. If you need to, you can create multiple perpendicular lines from the same point. For instance, I want to measure the across front, which is five inches from the high point shoulder. So with the edit pattern tool, right mouse click again on the high point shoulder, 
add a perpendicular line on the X axis and this time type five inches in the length. Note that the option to extend will automatically uncheck. And now that you've added the internal line, it can serve as a guide for you to get the across front measurement. For the across chest, that measurement is one inch below the armhole. So instead of dropping another internal line from the high point shoulder, I'm instead going to add a notch on the side seam. Using the notch tool, select the side seam and right mouse click to bring up the notch options. Type one inch for the upper segment of the side seam and click OK to add the notch. Then drag a guide to mark the location of the notches so it's a little easier to keep the line straight as you measure across the front chest. And by the way, if your rulers are not visible, you can bring them up by going to this menu and choosing the show rulers icon. For the across waist measurement, if it's not already indicated on the pattern, you'll want to establish how far down from the high point shoulder the waist is located. So drop another perpendicular line from the high point shoulder and the length will be whatever that measurement is for your brand. Mine is 14 inches. Also note that if the line forms in the opposite direction you want it, check the reverse box. Click OK and then again use those lines as a guide to measure across the waist. For the sweep or bottom opening, I drag a straight line POM from one side seam to the other. Most POMs are straight measurements, and I personally think it's more accurate. But since this hem has a slight curve, you may want the measurement along the curve. So to do that, switch to the Edit POM tool, right mouse click and choose Segment Type. The straight line runs along the hem curve and the measurement for the POM will also update accordingly. Just note that sometimes this tool will highlight the other parts of the pattern piece, not the line you want it to, which is so bizarre. And I haven't figured out exactly why that happens. I think it has something to do with symmetric patterns, but I've tried to research it and I can't find anything on it as of yet. What I have found is that if that happens, I just try it on the other pattern or the other side of the pattern and it works just fine. But if anyone knows exactly why this is happening, please feel free to put it in the comments. The body length is the length of the garment from high point shoulder to the bottom hem. And since the bottom hem on this garment is curved, I can't just measure straight down to the bottom edge. So again, I'm creating a perpendicular line, this time from the center front bottom hem on the Y axis. And now I can measure straight down to the bottom hem to get the body length measurement. The last measurement I'm going to show on this top is the sleeve length. And I normally do my sleeve length measurement from center back. So this time I'll be measuring across two pattern pieces. To prep, Make sure you have a perpendicular line extending above the back neck drop and add an internal line to the center of the sleeve pattern. Now with the POM tool, measure from center back to high point shoulder, create a straight measurement across the shoulder seam and then down the center of the sleeve pattern. For each of the initial points, just click once, and when you get to the hem of the sleeve, double click to end the measurement. Make sure you also get the measurement of your sleeve opening, and you can use one of the methods we previously discussed. 
And for any of these POMs, if there's one you don't want, you can always click the garbage can icon next to it in the object browser. I want to show you one more thing, and that is how to measure across a dart. And there's really no trick to this, but I wanted you to see that the tool will automatically exclude the open area between the dart legs and measure it as if the dart was closed. Once you've taken all of your spec measurements, and keep in mind that what I just showed you are base spec measurements, not design measurements, which you can also use this tool for. You can save all of your measurements as a .csv file, which will open very easily in Excel or Google Sheets. And if you're using my free Tech Pack template, you can just copy and paste those POMs and measurements into that. And yes, you can use this page as it is, but since I have a page already set up in my template with my headers and everything else, I prefer to copy and paste the POMs and the measurements into that. The other thing I do after I paste the specs is I go in and change the numbers a little. And I know you're thinking that's crazy, but hear me out. First of all, I'm a designer who happens to know a lot about pattern making and technical design, but I am not a pattern maker. So when I made this pattern, I was just going by eye and what looked good, not exact measurements. And even when you're using a garment to do this and you're taping it up to get your design measurements, most designers do the same thing. They'll tape it up based on what looks good and then the tech designer comes in after and measures it. Also, when it comes to your sample size, most of those measurements are whole simple numbers like five and a half, three and three eighths, six, not five and five sixteenths or three and a sixteenth. And I'm not saying that a measurement can't be that, but when you're measuring and creating a spec sheet for the middle size, the measurements tend to be a lot more straightforward. The more obscure measurements come into play once your pattern starts to grade up or down. So for some of these measurements, I'm just going to tweak the numbers so that they fall on a whole fraction. For instance, the neck opening will be changed to 6.75, six and three quarters. The neck drop is changed to 4.5, four and a half. The back neck drop will change to 1.375 or one and three eighths and so on. I'm just trying to find the closest whole fraction. And since the difference between most of these measurements are very minuscule, it won't hurt the look of the design. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to learn more about tech packs or you wanna start using Clothe 3D, Check out the links in the description to learn more about my online classes. Also, if you want to use my tech pack template, the link to that is also in the description. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you soon.